Hello again and welcome to Cardiac Imaging Agora. This is another session uh, to go over a reading of uh, a PET scan, a cardiac PET scan. Uh, again, uh, we will use the same uh, steps we used in prior sessions. Uh, just uh, familiarize yourself with these steps. Uh, they will be helpful in every uh, instance when you're reading uh, uh, PET for myocardial perfusion imaging uh, and interpreting these uh, PETs. Uh, we start with the first uh, set of images. Uh, on purpose here, I made the rest uh, uh, transmission and emission images a little bit favoring the uh, emission images, uh, just to show you uh, where the heart is and how these things uh, go over the CT. Uh, this is the rest. These are the rest images on this side. Uh, and on the uh, right-hand side, you can see the, uh, again, the same set of images where the CT is, uh, images are superimposed on the perfusion images. Uh, this exercise, again, is meant to uh, ensure the proper registration of the emission and transmission images uh, before we start uh, processing the images to avoid any uh, artifacts of uh, registration that can be misconstrued as uh, defects. Then we go to the reconstruction of the planes. Again, here we can see uh, that the planes, this, in this instance, the uh, system uh, picked up the heart properly. Uh, the uh, cutoffs are, uh, are again, uh, where the heart uh, margins end, where the left ventricular margins end. And uh, once we do that, we choose this area of interest and limit uh, uh, the area of analysis to the uh, LV cavity, as is depicted on the right-hand side here. And then with that, uh, we will move uh, straight into the uh, perfusion images. Uh, and again, a standard uh, uh, display here where the uh, stress images are on top, the rest images are on the bottom. And uh, we go over the rest images first, where we can see uh, displayed here, the short axis uh, images of the left ventricle uh, on the bottom, going from the apex to the base uh, with some GI activity here, but not interfering with the uh, interpretation of the images. Again, this looks like a, a normal uh, rest uh, study except for a very minor perfusion defect in the apex that can be uh, either uh, a true defect uh, with a very minor uh, perfusion defect, or it can be just uh, due to physiologic apical thinning given the high spatial resolution of the PET uh, machine. In the stress images, we can see right away there is a, a, a perfusion defect that's severe involving the distal part of the left ventricle uh, right here in the vertical long axis. In the horizontal log axis, you can see that left ventricle not only uh, missing its distal part uh, towards the apex uh, and the uh, uh, apical septum, but also we have this focal dilatation uh, of the left ventricle in the apex at the side of the uh, of, uh, ischemia. One more uh, thing here, we notice there is increased RV uptake from the rest to the stress images. So on the rest images here, you have minimal RV uptake. On the stress images, we have enhanced RV uptake. All these are signs of uh, uh, high risk uh, and more uh, representing multi-vessel coronary disease. So uh, again, note, uh, note uh, this is extremely important, the dilatation of the left ventricle and the RV, uh, increased RV uptake from the rest of stress images. Now remember, with PET, we're imaging right at peak stress. The patient is in the machine at peak stress in contrast to SPECT, where we image these patients uh, at time uh, a while later after uh, stress. Uh, so this is true post-stress or uh, peak stress uh, imaging. Uh, we go to, uh, to give a meaning to these observations on a 17 uh, segment model. So here we can see this minor or minimal perfusion defect in the uh, apex uh, in the rest images in the 17, uh, seven, 17 segment plot. Uh, on the stress images, we can see now the severity of this perfusion defect involving the apex as well as some mild defect in the uh, LV septum, inferior septum here and anterior septum here, uh, translating into an, uh, some stress score of 18, some rest score of three, and some different score of, uh, of uh, 15. Again, this is uh, interpreted at, uh, from zero being normal, uh, four being absent uh, uh, perfusion. The next uh, stop is to make sure we ascertain that we acquired uh, the gated images properly within a a reasonable histogram. This is the histogram for the gated images uh, during the rest uh, images where the heart rate was 60. And this is during the uh, stress images where the uh, average heart rate was 68. Again, this is a very narrow histogram indicating 
uh, that the patient was in regular uh, rhythm or in a controlled uh, rhythm with no uh, extra ectopy or variability in heart rate. Uh, the next images are the uh, uh, gated images, the rest being on, on the bottom, stress images are on top, and right away your uh, eye is drawn to the fact the left ventricle has some min minor uh, wall motion normality in the apex, which is exaggerated during the stress where the apex becomes uh, akinetic. The second observation is this uh, left ventricular dilatation post stress, where you can see the end systolic volume going up and uh, the uh, uh, left ventricular uh, uh, systolic function going down from 52% at rest to 44% post stress. These are again all prognostic signs that we should report uh, when we uh, go to the interpretation of the uh, test later. And one more important observation on this study is this is the patient uh, uh, the synchrony analysis at rest where we can see this is a very synchronous ventricle. All the segments are contracting almost at the same time. Uh, Post-stress, we can see this widening of the uh, histogram here, and we can see uh, the patient or the segments become dyssynchronous. This ventricle not only uh, has ischemia, left ventricular dilatation, drop in ejection fraction, but becomes dyssynchronous in contrast to a study on the right-hand side here where we have normal synchrony at rest and uh, post-stress. This is a normal uh, observation in a normal patient, and this is a patient, the patient we're dealing with right now, where it becomes dyssynchronous. The next uh, stop is to do the uh, flow ratios on these patients. Here we see a uh, uh, rest uh, flow ratios that are uh, reduced in the CERC and LAD territory, normal in the RCA, but uh, there is a failure of augmentation of flow in the stress images, specifically in the CERC and LAD, where we can see these mean flows well below our uh, cutoff of 1.8 in all segments, but predominantly in the LAD where we identified ischemia and some in the, in the CERC and the RCA2. Uh, uh, then we go on to interpret the CT images and we can see here there's extensive calcification of the uh, uh, coronary arteries. Uh, this is uh, right here in the uh, left system. In the right system, there is a mitral annular calcification. And in the long windows here, we don't see any uh, nodules or any problems uh, in the long uh, fields. Again, these are important. If you have the images available, you should look at them uh, and put them in uh, context. Now, generating the, uh, the uh, report for this uh, study, again, we look at this here. We figure out who read the study, uh, who are the fellows involved in it, what were the indications for the study. In this instance, it was assessment for known CAD. This patient had actually uh, a, a known uh, balloon uh, valvuloplasty a long time ago. Uh, 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 and uh, presented to our lab for, for evaluation for, uh, for chest pain. We document the uh, type of uh, tracer we use, time of injection, agent we use for uh, stress. And then we go on to, uh, uh, to uh, look at the uh, uh, clinical uh, variables for this patient. Again, this is a patient uh, uh, who said she had a, long, a PCI a long time ago. Uh, this is misconstrued here or misinterpreted 2019. That's actually not, uh, not, not the case. Uh, but uh, so we can see again, the heart rate goes up with regadenosin, uh, blood pressure goes down. That's an insurance policy that the patient reacted properly to the, regad to the regadenosin, to the stress agent. And the patient did not have any symptoms uh, during stress. Now we can see here uh, from the uh, uh, LV uh, side interpretation, we interpret this ventricle as mildly dilated with mild reduction in ejection fraction. Uh, if you remember from the uh, gated images earlier. Uh, again, we go back and code the uh, uh, ischemia, the site of ischemia. So this is an abnormal study. The area, the bed of ischemia is the LAD. Uh, this is a, uh, we can have a choice here between mild, moderate, and severe, depending on the size of the defect and where it was. So we, we interpret the study as no scar, but uh, again, because we did not have FDG to ascertain the presence of scar, but we interpret as ischemia and the distribution of the left anterior descending uh, artery. And finally, we get to the, uh, the point where we have to report this test for, uh, uh, for risk. Uh, this is uh, uh, a patient with a lot of high-risk markers. So this is a high-risk study with a drop in ejection fraction and TID. The patient did not have a prior uh, test to compare it to, but we comment about the coronary calcification in this, uh, in this patient. So this is how we interpret the study. This is uh, 
uh, more than 20% uh, of the ventricle was uh, ischemic. Uh, we have a drop in ejection fraction, high risk scan. Uh, again, we report the uh, myocardial blood flow on this patient, uh, showing the involvement of other territories besides the LAD in the, uh, uh, in the ischemia, at least by myocardial blood flow and blood flow uh, reserve uh, here. This will become uh, important once we go to the next uh, screen where we, the patient went on to have a cardiac cath. That's the cardiac cath on this patient, showing a significant uh, severe lesion in the left atrial descending artery here, as well as another uh, uh, significant uh, severe uh, lesion in the uh, uh, right coronary artery uh, right here. These were uh, uh, both uh, uh, corresponding to what we saw on the uh, stress test uh, of LAD ischemia, uh, myocardial blood flow uh, uh, showing uh, impaired blood flow reserve uh, beyond the LAD territory, uh, left ventricular dilatation with stress, increased RV uptake with stress, drop in ejection fraction with stress, all markers of, uh, of high risk. So again, to the take home messages for this study are the following, evaluate the extent and severity of ischemia on semi-quantitative images, appreciate the value of LV uh, focal dilatation Appreciate the value of a drop in ejection fraction post-stress. Appreciate the value of myocardial blood flow and use it if you can uh, to uh, detect ischemia beyond what your eyes can see on the semi-quantitative images. Integrate all these findings to create a clinical impression and an accurate uh, message. Thank you so much and uh, hope to see you again with, uh, with our next uh, uh, podcast.